Good morning and thank you for being with us here today. I am Jewel Green and this is Book Club Corner where every Wednesday on Tobago Updates we chat with a local author about the literary arts, their book and their love for the written word. We want to thank you for being here with us pre-independence, tomorrow's Independence Day and we know you all are getting ready to go out there in your red, black and white and show off, you know, and enjoy yourself. You know, it's it's we are heading into from emancipation into independence and then we're heading into republicanism. You know, it's just a beautiful time. And today I have with me on this pre-independence day, Ira Mathu. She is the president of the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago and an award-winning multimedia journalist. She is also the 2023 OCM. Bocas Prize winner for nonfiction with her book, Love the Dark Days. What a beautiful cover. Ira, welcome. Thank you so much for having me here, Jewel. I just feel like finally I've come home. <laughs> <laughs> Tobago is my home and I feel yes. like I've come home. Yes, I mean, listen, I'm not the welcoming committee. But I definitely am rolling out the red carpet with this wine today. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm not responsible for my actions once I drink that wine. <laughs> today, I want to just extend some greetings. Um, we have a birthday in the house. Our French-speaking producer, Antoine, happy birthday to you wherever you are. And I want to extend some condolences. We have had some highs and lows this week. Condolences to the Jack family, family of mine. We have lost mm. a cousin, a beloved cousin, laid to rest on Sunday. And I want to send my heartfelt condolences to you all. I wasn't able to be there, but my spirit is there with you all. As well, we have lost the literary giant, Dr. Michael Anthony. He passed away as well. And we send condolences to his children, to his friends, and their family at this time. And we can't forget Denise Plummer. Yes. She passed as well. Yes. You know, and right around independence, imagine we're losing these icons, but please remember their work lives on and we cherish the time we had with them and the time they had with us as we go forward. Denise Plummer was one of my alumni. She is literally, you know, she's out of the bowels of, Holy Name Convent. I myself am a Holy Name Convent student and even though I never met Denise Plummer, I always had hear about her in school and even in Trinidad and Tobago. She really earned her place in the Calypso um, genre and in that art form and we want to extend condolences as well to her family and friends at this time. But we want to get into the wine. Mm -hmm. We don't have Book Club Corner without wine right and let me tell you this wine we want to thank you for this kind sponsorship from Stacy she just did the DIY segment with her wines called Main Ridge wines and this she's giving us is a taro wine it's a white wine made from the taro ground provision and we're gonna do the five S's of wine tasting today we see the wine Mm -hmm. We swirl Looks the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a swirl. Mm -hmm. We look for the legs. We sniff the wine. Mm. Mm. We <laughs> sip and we savor. Oh. Mm. Exquisite. Yes. Oh. I think we can have some. Oh, I agree. This is a great pre-independence wine. So call Main Rich Wines and get your order in. Get your bottle of wines. We support local here on Book Club Corner. Local authors, local entrepreneurs, local businesses. And that's what we're here to do. And we want to thank Stacy for this taro wine. It's a dry wine, medium dry. And I love a dry wine. Stacy, thank you very much. Thank you. It's exquisite. <laughs> Ira, I want to get into this book, and I, when I saw the cover of your book, the title of your book, I ended up reading a poem by Derek Walcott, 
I want you to bring us in with that. Those few lines that really give an idea of the title of your book. I think um, with the writer, such as Derek Walcott, I was very lucky to spend some time with him. Mm -hmm. And it is in the book. Yes. And when I was thinking of the title, uh, you know, a colleague of mine, Monique Roffey, who won the Costa Prize, uh, the, the Women's Prize for Literature, she said, I think you should probably take it from one of his poems. Mm -hmm. And actually, so the poem that I got this from completely sums up my book, mm -hmm. because I don't think that any, there's no such thing as happiness without sadness, and it's all intermingled. Yes. So I'm going to read uh, just the part of the poem. It's from Dark August by Derek Walcott mm -hmm. uh, that inspired the um, title. Don't you know I love you, but I'm helpless at fixing the rain, mm -hmm. but I'm learning slowly to love the dark days. When I when I read that, because I was doing, you know, my, my research my and, and just came up on that, I bounced up on the poem, as they say, <laughs> and I said, wow, I said, and you referenced him in your book, mm -hmm. you have a segment where you met Derek Walcott and you had um, in, some interaction with him for your script. And I said, you know, those are one of the, th those are some of the things that inspire us as writers when we meet the greats. Yes when we meet them and they're able to, you know, some of their greatness, hopefully we, we want them to rub off on us. We want the good totally, parts, right? Totally. <laughs> so tell me, when you, when you decided on this cover, and not just the cover, but the name of your book, what was going on in your mind when you decided this is the name, this is what it's going to be called, and look at this beautiful cover? when you decided this is going to be the artwork to represent it. Tell me about that. I think I wanted to represent two continents. I wanted to represent India, where I was born, and where I grew up as a small child, and Trinidad and Tobago, which were well, mostly Tobago because I consider Tobago my home, which is my adopted home, but which is my home. If you ask me which flag I pay allegiance to, it is Trinidad and Tobago. India is a place of dreams and uh, memory and where you've come from, but this is home. And I wanted to show both sides because you can't, you really need to know where you've come from in order to know who you are as a person. So this cover, if you look at it, there's a sari. This yes. is actually a sari, the I red part. It. It's a sari and <clears throat> it's a, my mother's sari mm. and I was wearing it. And the top part is the flora represents the flora and fauna of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. I particularly wanted the purple heart, which was really something I really wanted in there because I think it represents love. Mm -hmm. So to me, this represents not just me. I didn't want this to be a book about me, which is why there's no face. Mm -hmm. It's a book of continents of how somehow or the other people from all continents of the world migrated here and you know there was some kind of percolating happening and that is how we have all become Trinidad and Tobago and I'm so glad you mentioned Denise Plummer because for years I was like where am I from I'm from India I'm from Tobago I'm from here studied in Canada England and then you know I heard her that song where she said the calypso where she said is here that conceive me is here I go dead and, you know, that gave me goosebumps. Although I was not conceived here, is here I go dead. And I love the fact that people of all continents, we can look, all look differently, but we're deeply rooted to this place and we love this country. Yes. So. I feel like it's just such a full circle moment for yes. me and for you and for the country because tomorrow is <clears throat> Independence Day. Yes. And how apropos that you spoke those words from her calypso is here I come from. Yes. You know, and that is one of the things that I think um, as Trinidad and Tobagonians, we hold dear the Just. space that we come from yes. and the home that we make here. Yes. You know, when we look at it, if we're really honest with ourselves, nobody but perhaps the Amerindians can claim to 
be from here. Absolutely. Everybody came yes. and found a space yes. or was brought yes. and found a space and made here home. Yes. And I want to ask you, when I read your book, there's a section in there and I want you to read it for us, but it felt then that you had decided and felt that Tobago was your home. And for me, it was that part of the book where you decided, I'm going to learn to cook and I'm going to do all these things that I need to do. I'm going to go across by the neighbor. I yes. want you to read that part from us for us. But tell me, when did you feel like this is my home? What was the moment that you felt this is my home, this is it? I think, you know, when you come as children, children have open, innocent minds. Children don't see race. And that is what makes my time here so special because when we came here as children, we didn't see race. We saw people who were kind to us and who loved us and who we loved back. And so we almost grew wild in a way that, you know, we were living on the fort, we were living, you know, just underneath and next to us, we, there were the yips, Chinese. Then there was the, um, right up on the fort where we lived, there was Mrs. Wheeler who I can't say is my neighbor, but is my second mom. Because mm. she, when my mother was so bewildered by this new country, she took us under her wing. Now, Mrs. Wheeler, as people in Tobago know, as she brought up four amazing children, including two doctors. You know, people know mm. Victor Wheeler, people know Jillian Wheeler, and Alana Wheeler, mm -hmm. and Kathy Wheeler. And when I needed order in my life, when my mother was like, I am in a strange country. This is so foreign to me. As a child, mm -hmm. she drew myself, my brother Varun, and my sister into her fold. Mm -hmm. She showed us how to cook. She, while she was dressing all the children, she made sure that we combed our hair too, you know. And she uh, gave us a sense of belonging. So wh when we were with Mrs. Wheeler, she said, "Okay, you all go and pick all the plums." You all go and pick all the guavas. I'm going to show you all how to stew it, <laughs> right? And yeah. Victor Wheeler, who I consider my brother, and my brother Varun, who's passed away, considered him his brother as well. He said, we are the only people, Julian and I, in the whole world who made burnt ice cream. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, of course, you know, we burnt the milk. But, but everything else, the guavas, whatever ice cream we made, was very local, you know, with the churning. Yeah. And I think our childhood was just like, if you can think of the most idyllic childhood you know, go-karting down the hill from the fort, moonlight picnics, you know, yes. in in Pigeon Point. Um, just everything about Tobago, walking along the beach, it just yes. all felt so safe. And, you know, like my mom, she was, she. I used to feel very weird because my mom was the only person in all of Tobago at the time wearing a sari. Yes. And she's walking <laughs> up that hill, going down the fort. I'm like, oh God, why can't you just look like all the other moms? And uh, that's when, you know, Mother Robinson, who mm -hmm. is uh, the late a &R Robinson's mom, saw mm -hmm. me and my mom walking up the hill, me in my bishop's uniform, <laughs> mom in a sari and a parasol. And she said, dear, you all look thirsty. Would you like to come in for a drink? Mm -hmm. And she offered us water, cold water. And I walked in there. It was so amazing to me, Jewel, because it was like walking into my grandmother's parlor in Bangalore in India, because it was exactly the same. Mm -hmm. There was a piano, there were books, there were old, beautiful photographs. And at the, you know, she showed us photographs of Anna Robinson, who she had said went to Oxford and all her children's photographs were in the wall. And, you know, the, it was the same thing in India. People from my family, that's what we loved, you know, mm -hmm. music and books and, of course, and you know, family. education. So after that, we yeah. could never leave Tobago without going to say hello and goodbye the Granny Robinson. Yes. So I not only got a mother in Mrs. Wheeler and a family with the Wheelers and siblings with the Wheelers, but I got a grandmother here too. So I think that, you know, it was there wasn't any one moment, but I would just, as a child, I just became a child of Tobago. Yes. Ira, my heart is full with, you know, us talking about not just Tobago, because yes, everything we've just talked about brings us to Tobago, but this is um, a Caribbean repeating yes. story, repeating pattern. It ha you know, the Caribbean, we are, we are one. We are. We are family. Mm -hmm. 
And I love the story you're telling of coming from one continent to the Caribbean, where you now become a child of the Caribbean. I am. And that's so heartwarming for me because I feel as if, you know, Caribbean people are special people. Very. We're so warm and sometimes very, very, br we say what we mean. We are very straightforward, very down to earth, but the love, the warmth that you feel there, I think, you know, can't be denied, no matter where you go in the mm. Caribbean. And tomorrow is independence. Guys, we're going to be 61 <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> tomorrow. Ira, could you take us into that passage where you decided you're going to go and learn to cook from Miss Wheeler? That was part of the book that I felt was so homely. Could you read that? Sure. I'm trying to find it. I think with, um, I think it's page 78. 78. 78. Yes. yes. You're so sorted out. So, <laughs> so I think from the, the bottom you want to yeah, that yeah. right. Yeah. But before I say that, what I also want to say about being in the Caribbean is that I was accepted here in a way that I was never accepted in India. My mother is Muslim. My father is Hindu. Mm -hmm. So in both sides of the family, they were yes. like, oh, no, she's not really part of us. And so when I thought about the big picture, I thought, look, we've come from all the continents of the world, from Africa, from India, from Europe, from, you know, uh, from uh, the Middle East. And we all came with something in common. Uh, maybe I think there was trauma in the way Africans and to a lesser extent the way the Indians were brought here mm -hmm. because, you know, there was a lot of colonialism and there was a lot of brutality. Yeah. But what happened is that in a sense we all wiped away our past. So I think this is like probably one of the most magical countries in the world because you, when you wipe away a past of a place like India, you also wipe away the old hatreds because yes. India is also built on thousands of years of hatreds, of tribal hatreds and same in a, in a sense, so are parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. When we came here, there was none of that. We were all wiped clean. And then we started talking to one another, the African to the Indian to the Chinese to the Arab and that is where a whole new identity came about, an identity of continents. I love it. So, um, okay, so this is when we've come from Tobago. I cross a courtyard. This is when we lived on the fort in, in Tobago. Mm -hmm. I cross a courtyard to our neighbors and our first school friends. The boy, David, is in Winky's class. This Susie in mine, Debbie in angels. Sharon is the baby who mummy pets up and calls mouse. Their mother, Mrs. Waterman, who is really Mrs. Wheeler, mm -hmm. is a prominent civil servant and a strict single parent. The Watermans have clean, ironed clothes and scheduled schedules. They go to church and have baths and bedtimes. Instead of playing that weekend, I asked Mrs. Waterman if I could keep her company in the kitchen. I watch as she stews plums, burns sugar for a stewed chicken, bakes a macaroni pie, simmers crab and callaloo. I learn to feed the crabs with hot pepper as they crawl around in a bucket and watch as Mrs. Waterman cleans them before dropping them in the boiling callaloo pot with the coconut milk. I just wanted that to linger in the air for a bit. Because let me tell you, there is nothing sweeter than some good Sunday Creole food. You know? Let me, there's <laughs> nothing, nothing sweeter, guys. Nothing. I don't know what you all will be cooking tomorrow for Independence, but if you're going to be doing this menu, crab, callaloo, stew chicken, please call me. <laughs> <All right? laughs> call me. Call up Tobago Updates and say, um, let me get that number for that girl who does Book Club Corner. I want to invite her over. <laughs> I'm there, right? Because <laughs> let me tell you, there's just something so relaxing and familiar about that menu. Even when you talk to persons from other islands, they mm -hmm. have variations of it as well. Yes, they right? do. It may not be called Kalalu here, but it may be called something else there. You know, it's just these little nuances, but we're so one. We're so intertwined and interwoven into each other. I love that. Ira, when you're... When your family decided to come to Tobago, 
I want you to tell me one, how did you feel? How what was happening within you? Because one thing I love about the book is how you express yourself, how you talk about and um, excavate your feelings, right? You hold on to a feeling and allow the reader to really get a good view of it, a good feel of it. So I want to know, how did you feel when you heard you were going to be leaving India to come to Tobago? And why did you all leave? Well, my feeling was of excitement because, you know, if you're, my father was in the Indian Army, so every three years, we would move around India anyway. Okay. So we lived in Bangalore, we lived in Delhi, we need, lived in a place called Chandigarh, which is in Punjab. Mm -hmm. You know, India is made up of, mm -hmm. uh, of 27 states and as many languages. Mm -hmm. So I, I think moving had become a part of our lives. We, we lived in Simla where, you know, where the, you see snow all year round. And then we wow. lived in Bangalore where it's, it's, it's quite warm. And then, you know, so all the weather is different. Mm -hmm. The people look different in certain parts of India. Where I was born in Guwahati, people look Chinese, you know. So everybody, mm -hmm. so that's like the continent of India. So I thought it was <laughs> another move. But when I heard that it was an island, I guess everybody's read Mowgli, you know, mm -hmm. about the little boy who yeah. was brought up in the, in the, and I thought, oh my God, so I'm going to be in the middle of an island. I was a, very imaginative child and I was so very excited yeah. about it but I guess um, the grown-ups had an, another view of it I guess they mm -hmm. thought oh gosh it's the unknown yes. and especially my grandmother who this book also centers around yes so, Bari Mummy Bari Mummy yes. like the inimitable Bari Mummy <laughs> yes a, a powerful woman you yes. know actually it's, it's so interesting that I always thought the only person who could discipline me as good as Bari Mummy was Mrs. Wheeler. Yeah. So you have two <laughs> continents, <laughs> but same strong women, yes. strong disciplinarians, yes. you know. So, um, yeah, so that, that, was really, that was really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the, in your book, because there's a theme of gender running throughout the book, when you talk about gender, I, I feel like you've written about some strong but very vulnerable women. Yes. Not, not so strong that you didn't understand what was happening with them. Yes. But you'd have to take a good look. Yes. To get it. Yes. Right? And isn't that just us as women? You know, yes. Very, very much um, a part of everything mm -hmm. and yet still very, very much a part of our own little worlds. Yes. in terms of what's happening with our families, very much intertwined into that. And you laid bare for me when I was reading the book, a lot of your foundation, you know, this is how I was brought up, this is what happened. And, you know, whether it is for a person's observation, critiques, or whatever it may be, I feel that you did such a good job of using this book to just... Um, as a cathartic experience and, and um, exercise to talk about all the things that you had been through. And I want to know, I don't know if the readers all want to know, but tell us, how did it, how did it feel to you to go back, to revisit those emotions and those places and spaces in your life and put them down in a book for the world to read? Well, I think, you know, as a journalist, what you see when you learn empathy, what you see is that you're not a singular person. You're actually connected to the feelings of many, many people. You know, remember as a journalist, I would have been in, you know, I, I visited prostitutes in Curep. I went to the, to the dumps in, in, in Trinidad, you know, the landfills. I interviewed people on drugs. I went into the prisons in Trinidad and I interviewed people as to, you know, what made you kill a man? Mm -hmm. And what I found was there was a connecting something there, and the connection there was trauma. So whether you are a, you know, a twenty-year-old man who was in I don't know whether Separia or Lavantil, and you killed somebody, you had that rage. And I'm an older mm -hmm. woman, you know, who was born in India. We have a similar rage. Mm -hmm. We feel rage as humans in the same way. Yeah. So the reason I decided to excavate it, it was not so much to say this is my story but which is to say that this is all our story of trauma. Mm -hmm. So there's a wide story, the international story of trauma of post-colonial societies. Slavery was possibly the worst thing to happen to every to humankind ever since. 
you know, it, since we've been on Earth, humans mm -hmm. have walked the Earth. Yeah. So that's trauma, yeah. you know. And then there was indentureship, which was trauma. Then there's the trauma that women have gone through through the ages. Mm -hmm. So there's trauma yeah. there. Then there was the trauma that you see in a lot of people are like, why are all, why are there so much crime among, amongst young African and Indian men? Well, because that's trauma that was passed on from colonialism. Yes. It was passed from father to son to son. In fact, my husband was telling me the other day, you know, that the reason there was so much trauma, maybe amid some of the Indian community, was that people weren't paid in cash, they were paid in, in alcohol. Wow. So, you know, that is, and, and if you think yeah. about what the slavery did, yes. it separated families, yeah. it, put, it separated the men from women. Mm -hmm. So we all come from trauma. So, Ira, I'm, we're going to take a break now, just a quick break, and we're going to come back. And when we come back, talking about the da Love the Dark Days by Ira Mathur, I want us to get into this post-colonial conversation. There's something there we must talk about. You know, we're on the brink of independence tomorrow, 61 years of independence. And we must talk about it. And this book brings it beautifully to us. So as we go on a break, y'all, please stay with us. Get your wine, get your snacks. We're coming back with Ira Mathur, Lovely Dark Days. How it's gonna go They better look up and look Cause this is your show And everybody's gonna know Say it to them once again This is your show. Mamailatai Home Services. We specialize in cleaning of carpets and rugs, mattresses, living room and dining room sets, vehicle detailing, cleaning and sanitizing of homes and commercial spaces. We also do landscaping and tree cutting, pressure and power washing, floor care, fumigating and air purifying. You can also call us for professional painting services, babysitting and adult sitting. Call us now. 333 -4 430 at Mamaya Kai Home Services. We take cleaning to another level. Everybody only worrying, worrying. Never ever worry. Don't mind how things looking hard. I tell them never ever worry. If your eyes nice, can't get damaged bad. I tell them never ever worry. What I'm saying is true. So just consider Tatil is always right there for you. I tell them never ever worry, don't mind if life make you sad. I tell them never ever worry, if your house get flooded out real bad. I tell them never ever worry, what I'm saying is true. So just consider, Tatil is always right here for you. back with the author we're back with the author Ira Matur love the dark days and we're going to just very very quickly have two minutes of um, conversation before we go back to Jay um, and brunch Ira please take us into the section where you they're talking about moving to Tobago sure so we're in Bangalore in India and my grandmother my mother and my father are sitting in, a, in the drawing room and they're talking about where they're going so my grandmother says, where is it, Ved? Um, and my father says, a tiny island in the Caribbean, south of Miami, a former British colony, like ours. Their prime minister, Eric Williams, is an Oxford man. They have oil. They've commissioned a highway. Eric Williams. I, I had to let her read that part because 
as we were discussing earlier era we're heading into independence celebration tomorrow mm -hmm. there's going to be marches and parades and all of that but we don't want to forget the reason why we're here right in celebrating independence it wasn't just eric williams you know he had a whole slew mm -hmm. of support mm -hmm. but he was for me in terms of the conversation um you know the driving force yes. for that idea of independence and really and truly you know across the caribbean we're selling celebrating independence some of us together and some of us have different timings right yes. like barbados is in november but a lot of other islands are celebrating independence in august and i love that um conversation that we started about post-colonialism because you know a lot of people talk to us about what independence really is is it is it this he envisioned tell me your thoughts on coming from india to tobago trinidad and tobago um, as a twin island republic are there similarities you think between the two in terms of empire heading into independence are there similarities in terms of what we're celebrating and what we're seeing totally because i think that what the british did they i mean for us in both our cases not only did they pillage um you know whether mm -hmm. it was for oil or whether it was you know in this case it was cocoa and sugar mm -hmm. and in india of course they 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 took a lot um they also did a number on our minds mm -hmm. right so that we started feeling that we were in or they made us feel that that was the mother country and we didn't know who we were. We were all meant to be brown English men and women. And I think that after, <laughs> yep. after colonial, after col independence, we have slowly begun to see who we are. Yes. And so our answer to Shakespeare is what? Is who? <laughs> Derek Walcott. Yes. We found ourselves. And isn't yes. it amazing that we've kind of beat them at their own game because Sir V.S. Naipaul in mm -hmm. his lifetime was known as the greatest living writer in english wow. so I, and you know and today i also want to say that if it weren't for you know the that brilliant mind of uh, of sir ellis clark he he of course charted our first constitution yes. and what an amazing job he did at it and we're still finding ourselves because often as people in the colonies we have bought into the narrative that we are not good enough we're on the sidelines the main act is happening in Europe and America when it's not. Mm -hmm. It's happening right here within yes. us. Guys, we are wrapping up today. We want to thank you for tuning in with us today. It is pre-independence. We are celebrating right before independence, which is tomorrow. And we want to thank the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago President, Ira Mathur, for being with us today to talk to us about Love the Dark Days, her book about life her memoir. And as we close off, we want to invite you to tune in with us next week when we speak to yet another Caribbean author, Mervyn O'Neill, and we will be chatting with him about his many, many books. We want to close with some wine. Thank you, Mainridge Wines, and we cheers. Cheers, cheers to Ira. Thank you cheers for having to the me. Caribbean. Cheers. And cheers to you. Happy pre-independence. Happy independence.